From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This afternoon, I want to talk a few minutes about uh, diarrhea. Diarrhea is uh, an uncomfortable condition that can have uh, many causes, but always we should think about uh, the most common causes. And in most cases, diarrhea is a self-limiting condition. Many times it's just a viral gastroenteritis, presenting with uh, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. But there are certain things that need immediate attention. Now. Anything, I mean, if you get any kind of case in these uh, tests, first think of uh, what you are going to do with the uh, differential diagnosis before you ask anything. Always go for uh, differential diagnosis. That helps you to formulate your questions. That's what I did. I mean, you don't have to spend a lot of time, just a few seconds. And the good way to start it is to think anatomically. I mean, if uh, a person has diarrhea, what does it affect? It affects the gastrointestinal system. So think about gastrointestinal system. What can affect gastrointestinal system? It can be an infection. It can be uh, an allergy. It can be a metabolic problem. It, it can be electrolyte problem. And uh, it can be an obstructive problem. So all these things come in the differential diagnosis. And you can use that for anything. If the patient comes with chest pain, what are in the chest, your heart and the lungs and uh, esophagus, what affects those organs? And you can think in those lines. And uh, you, when you formulate that uh, differential diagnosis, it would be easy to ask questions based on patient's presenting problem. And uh, for example, if the patient is uh, saying that he has some association with certain dietary products, his lactose intolerance, so you can ask, uh, is there any association between your diarrhea and any foods you eat? Because there are substances that can give lactose intolerance. So those questions open up a lot of uh, information. So many times that helps, and, and also the education of the patient based on these questions. See, there is no magic formula to formulate these things. It's always situational as the, uh, uh, based on the patient's needs. And when you advise the patient, you, uh, you, you ask them those important questions. Think about food poisoning. It can cause diarrhea. Is it possible that uh, your food might be spoiled? Is anybody else in the home has been sick? Does anybody have the same symptoms like you? And uh, like that, did someone else eat the same food and become ill too? That helps to open up. Patients think about uh, his friends and family members. If anybody got the same symptoms, that's a strong indication that there is some food poisoning happened. You can ask about uh, any headache, fever, chills, weakness. So associated symptoms are important. Do you have any other symptoms besides diarrhea, like fever, weight loss, and food poisoning? How do you advise the patient at the end of the encounter? You need to tell them to avoid dehydration. Don't worry, reassurance is important. Most food poisonings clear up in one or two days. Avoid solid foods. Uh, eat liquid foods as you can tolerate. But there is always a threshold. If you have diarrhea for more than 48 hours, call me. That's very important. You never leave people without following. On the day you reassure them, you always give them a threshold. After this day, if you still have the problem, call me. 
The other important cause of diarrhea is uh, traveler's diarrhea. So you need to ask about, uh, did you travel anywhere recently? I mean, uh, it doesn't have to be some foreign country. Even if you, you can get traveler's diarrhea, even if you go to some other place in the United States. And it doesn't have to be uh, an infectious food substance that could give rise to traveler's diarrhea. Sometimes even allergic gastritis. When we eat foods that we do not eat usually, that can cause uh, traveler's diarrhea or allergic gastritis and then diarrhea. So traveler's diarrhea is an important thing to keep in mind and ask about uh, traveler's history and camps. Uh, have you been to a camp recently? Giardia. Giardia is a quick example to talk about. So you advise the patient based on that. And the other associated symptom is the abdominal pain. And when you ask about abdominal pain, where is the abdominal pain? Where is the abdominal pain located? Exactly which quadrant? How long the abdominal pain lasts? How bad is it on a scale of 1 to 10? Is the abdominal pain coming with diarrhea or before that, after that? And the condition you can think about is diverticulitis. And uh, explain these things at the end of the patient encounter. If you think, uh, I'm, I think you have diverticulitis. What is diverticulitis? You can write a nice diagram and explain that to the patient. Do not use medical jargon. I mean, people don't think you are a smart person. They think you are high-headed and you are not. You are very difficult to communicate with. Always use that simple language people can understand. And the consistency of the stools. How is the stool? Is there any mucus? Blood is just watery. And many times patients tell you what they think about their own diagnosis. I have many patients telling me that they got stomach flu. Stomach flu is basically the common word for viral gastroenteritis. So viral gastroenteritis, if you think it's a viral gastroenteritis, you will tell them to rest and uh, to drink plenty of fluids to prevent dehydration. If they are children, you tell them, the parents, to give oral dehydration solution to their kids. So those are the things. And um, you tell them to take clear liquids, to avoid caffeine, because caffeine can make the diarrhea worse. And is there any favor? And uh, but as I said, give a threshold. Tell them to if the diarrhea is lasting more than ten days, call me. Viral gastroenteritis is self-limiting, but if it is uh, long, patient has the problems like uh, they can develop complications like dehydration and uh, acute renal injury. So in those cases, you always send them with a um, uh, threshold. Then abdominal cramps. Do you have any abdominal cramps? Um, are you passing any gas? And how are the stools? How do they look like? Are they greasy? You see, many times greasy stools indicate uh, parasites like uh, giardia or bacterial causes. So in those cases, again, I mean, just a few simple questions help you to identify the cause. And also, favor. Do you have fever? And do you have pain? And where is the pain? Abdominal pain. Where is it? For example, patient is, is here. Is it radiating? I mean, is it moving from front to back or anywhere else? If the patient says it's moving back, it could be gallbladder stones or uh, pancreatitis. And severe abdominal pain or uh, cramping can also uh, happen in other things like uh, intensity of the pain. What is the intensity? How bad is your pain? If the patient says it's not a big deal, then you see simple gastroenteritis. If they say, oh, this is too much, I never had this kind of pain, it is a severe abdominal pain, think of intestinal obstruction. Because intestinal obstruction can cause severe abdominal pain. And most of the times patients will tell you truth unless they came to your clinic for to pick up uh, a narcotic uh, prescription. So if the patient says, uh, what kind of labs do I need? 
tell them what the labs they, you, they need based on the differential diagnosis you formulated. Okay, doc, when should I get these labs? I mean, there is no uh, one answer to that question. It depends. I mean, if, you, if the patient comes with fatigue and you want to evaluate fatigue, patients can have those labs done in the next uh, one week. But if the patient comes with a severe right lower quadrant abdominal pain, diarrhea, fever, that's, uh, uh, that's a possibility of appendicitis and uh, there is no time. The lab should be done today. The CT scan should be done now. So you see, when should I get these labs done? The answer is, there is no one answer. It depends on the context. So don't make one answer quick uh, formulas. Always go by the context. What is happening? What have you found? Just use common sense box. That takes you a long way in this business. Now, also think about antibiotic-associated colitis causing diarrhea. Patient is having diarrhea. Ask them, have you been taking any medications? Have you been taking any antibiotics recently? And if they say yes, then you should suspect antibiotic-associated colitis, especially with clindamycin. And uh, the other thing is uh, malabsorption. Malabsorption can cause diarrhea. You ask, uh, are there any foods that you are not tolerating? Or have you been losing weight? And uh, over the last few months, have you been developing any diarrhea? So that gives clues to diseases like celiac disease and uh, malabsorption. And also, is there any blood or mucus? Those point to other things like uh, Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel disease. If there is blood, tenesmus, lot of pain associated with abdominal pain, inflammatory bowel disease is one of the common causes that present with those symptoms. So you, you see, you, your thinking changes as the interview goes. And there is no set of questions to ask. It can go in any way based on those uh, patient's responses. If the patient says, I'm having uh, constipation, then diarrhea, constipation, then diarrhea, you should think of irritable bowel syndrome. And probably this patient has irritable bowel syndrome is alternating bowel habits. And uh, it's a clinical diagnosis. But still, you see, when patients ask you for a definitive diagnosis, give them a differential diagnosis. Say, based on, the, uh, based on what you told me and based on what I observed in physical examination, it seems to be you're having irritable bowel syndrome it seems to be you're having viral gastroenteritis. Let me do some labs, then I will tell you what exactly you're having. So always say that. Don't give a definite diagnosis. Tell, it seems to be your chest pain could be due to myocardial infarction. It seems to be your abdominal pain could be due to pancreatitis. And uh, make it a nice sentence, like based on what you have told me and based on what I have observed in the physical examination, I think of a few causes. And uh, on the top of my list is uh, pancreatitis. Second is gallbladder disease. Third is diverticulitis. Like that. Give a differential diagnosis. That always keeps you safe. And also go by age. If an young patient Irritable bowel syndrome is most likely. And if an elderly patient comes and says that he is having diarrhea after having constipation for so many days and he is leaking water through the rectum, he feels like a large, hard substance down. Fecal impaction. And you need to tell the patient you need fecal disimpaction. And uh, do I need a CT scan? No, you don't need to do a CT scan to diagnose fatal impaction. So you take a good history and ask a patient, how, how are you feeling on this? 
patient says that this is my history, I am I'm constipation, finally I had diarrhea, fatal impaction, tell the patient to go to the, uh, that the patient needs uh, enema or fatal disimpaction, or fecal disimpaction like that. So you see folks, there is no clear-cut form. It all depends on what differential diagnosis you arrive. The labs you write should depend on the differential diagnosis you come up with. You see, and the differential diagnosis comes based on uh, the questions you ask and uh, based on the information you obtain from the patient, based on your physical examination findings. So, you see, medicine is more an art as much as it is a science. So we need to keep that in mind and uh, that helps a lot folks. So that's about uh, diarrhea. Hopefully you got something. Please visit us on our website if you need to watch more videos. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.